Howdy folks, my name is Michael Perry. Um, I live in rural Wisconsin. I'm talking to you from the little room over my garage where I can look out over the back 40. And it's also where I do most of my writing. Um, I really wouldn't be much anywhere if it wasn't for a book called Population 485, which was a book about my hometown. I was away from there for 12 years. And, and then when I came back, I didn't really know how to join up because I didn't go to any of the local churches, I don't drink, so I didn't go to any of the taverns, and as I like to joke, I didn't bowl, and I didn't play softball, and I can't polka, so there wasn't much left to do, but join the local volunteer fire department, and that's what I did, and that's how I rediscovered my hometown and, and, and the people I grew up with, and I was allowed to write a book called Population 45 about that experience, and man, if it wasn't for that book, I don't know what I'd be doing, but I've been writing books ever since, and independent booksellers have been indispensable to me. They've been a huge part of my, I always don't, I don't like the word career, but I guess, you know, if you're making a living at it or trying to, it should be kind of a career, shouldn't it? Um, and independent booksellers, Population 45, when it first came out, they weren't expecting, I had a publisher in New York City, they, they weren't expecting it to sell that well, I know, because of how few copies they printed. And then all of a sudden it started getting some momentum and taking off, and that was because independent booksellers were hand-selling it. It never showed up on the New York Times bestseller list, it just quietly found its audience. And in many cases that audience uh, was grown by a bookseller handing my book to a reader hand selling saying if you liked that book you probably like this book and i've never forgotten that and i myself am kind of an indie dude man i my first four books i self-published and just recently i've self-published a few more i still work with publishers but i just never lost that kind of scrappy diy ethos part of it was just because i was raised by loggers and farmers and Nobody ever applauded when you milked the cows, you were just expected to do it. So I just kind of came into writing not knowing what I was doing, and I self-published books, and then eventually I got a publisher, and as I said, indie booksellers just brought me into existence, and um, I've maintained that relationship with them now. Even these, I'm doing this little self-published project right now, and I've had a whole flurry of emails back and forth with some of my favorite uh, booksellers, and... Um, they're, they're helping me decide how to proceed. So I don't know, I'm rambling already that, you know, I get paid by the word, so I guess that's only natural, but um, I'm rambling. But what I'm trying to convey is just that, that very base level fundamental gratitude uh, to independent booksellers. Other people can speak to the importance of art with a capital A and writing with a capital W and literature with a capital L, but I just see the boots on the ground things that independent booksellers do for, for a guy like me. And this really is just my little testament of gratitude for that. Um, I'm going to close. I, I, I tried to think of what story I could tell about independent booksellers. And there's just a million of them. But I thought I'd tell two that are humiliating for me. And perhaps you'll enjoy that. The first is... One of my first self-published books, I would do all the promotion myself and I'd send out little flyers and postcards. And there was this little independent bookseller that sadly, like so many, is no longer in existence, but up in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. And I set up my own reading there and I did my own advance work and promotion. The big night comes and they'd set up all these chairs and there were five people in the building besides me. Um, one was the manager of the bookstore. Uh, the other, there were two that, one was my sister and her boyfriend that I'd never met before, so that was a great time to meet him. Um, and then there were two, and I'm just going to use the phrase because it's accurate, two sweet little old ladies, and, th and they were sitting in the very front row, very attentive, purses in their laps. And I thought, well, you know, it's not what I hope, but uh, those two came, and I'm going to give them everything that I've got right here. And I started reading with heart and conviction and feeling and making eye contact. And about 10 minutes in, one of the little old ladies shot her hand up. And I thought, well, I normally take questions at the end, but what the heck? And so I said, yes, ma'am, uh, what is your question? And she said, when does the cooking demonstration begin? <laughs> But 
So I've had readings where, you know, you'll hear writers say, and, and even musicians occasionally, hey, um, well, I did a show and nobody showed up or only one person showed up. That's nothing. So when Population 45 came out and started doing better than we expected and they started adding on stops to my tours and one night I found myself in Nashville, Tennessee doing a reading for Population 45 and there were 35 people that came to see me and buy books. Now 35 people turning out for a cheesehead, an unknown cheesehead in Nashville, Tennessee. That's a pretty big deal and so I admit, you know, I was raised humble but that night when I left and I was driving... Uh, my next stop was Memphis, and so I was driving myself from Nashville to Memphis, and I admit, I, I thought, 35 people in Nashville, the mic train is rolling. And I thought, let's see what waits me, awaits me in Memphis. So I get to Memphis the next night, and I did what all authors do, they won't admit it, and I'm sure there's the musician equivalent of this. You sneak in through the shelves and you peek over to where the reading's going to be and you, and you see, is, is anybody there? And I peeked over the stacks and they had these chairs set up. It was beautiful. There's a podium and there was a fireplace with a fire going. And, and there were seven people sitting in the chairs and it was 15 minutes before the reading started. And so I did the math. I'm like, man, if there's seven people waiting and it's still 15 minutes before the show starts, I'm going to hit double figures in Memphis. And right then, the manager of the bookstore got on the PA and she said, Ladies and gentlemen, author Michael Perry will be here this evening to read from his book, Population 485. If you would like to hear Mr. Perry, please join us in the chairs over by the fireplace. And all seven people went, Poof. Everybody left. And nobody ever did come. And so I tell people, not only have I had readings where nobody showed up, I've had people actively leave when they heard I was coming. So um, part of the way that I came to understand the independent bookselling world was nights like that when I had a, a nice hour to just sit and talk to nobody but the bookstore manager. <laughs> hey, hang in there, everybody. Um, I just had to whip this out quick because I just found out about it, but uh, I'm glad to be a part of it, and I'm, I'm deeply grateful to, to indie booksellers who are hanging in there and, and doing good work to this very moment. Forward.